it's five o'clock. You guys want to wait? There might be a few more people trying to get in. <laughs> yeah. Justin. No, Justin's not coming in. We'll stay in. We'll pray and uh, do the pledge. Well, I lost connection. Just yes, wait for a second. No, no, no. All right, it's back here, please. Dear Lord, tonight I just ask for a special prayer for my uh, my mother-in-law. I just lift up her today and my family. I just ask that you be with them and uh, you know heal them the only way you know how. Miracle, dear Lord, just whatever you you know it's best for her. I ask that you continue to love the other family and not just my family. I ask that if anybody needs healing or your love or your uh, calm, that you be with them, dear Lord, during their times of trial. <coughs> dear Lord, I ask that you be with us tonight during this meeting. Everything we'll do. Here will be pleasing to you, dear Lord. It will be good for the county. Uh, we just continue to ask that you be with all, all six of us, dear Lord. Again, just thank you for this county. We appreciate everything we have. Uh, we, we love this place, and we just want to do good things for it, dear Lord. And it's your name we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I will say before we get started, uh, I do have my phone on. I, my, there is some things going on with my family, so if it does go off, I'm sorry. Um, so let's go ahead and start. Um, do I have a motion to approve the September 12th minutes? Make a motion. Okay, motion by Callaway. Second. Second, I'm like to look at Let's do a roll call, just to make everything transparent. Callaway. Yes. Morphew? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Bennett? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Okay, so we want down number three. We have bills, claims, payments, and transfers. I have a motion for bills, claims, payments, and transfers. And are there any questions? Let me go over the late list. Is there just one page on the late list? The highlighted portions are the late list. I'm sorry. So this is the entire bill list, and the highlighted portions that are in there are what is late on the late list. It printed all together. I think there were about four items, and that's it. There's a couple things on the transfers that they were talking about. Um, we are going to, there's $11,895 payment. There was a refund. We don't know the company yet, but they're going to have to refund the company that will charge them for occupational tax. Um, we also had to add money into the uh, golf course, but that's a good thing. We had to put for the uh, tax collected because uh, golf sales are up, so we're collecting more tax, so we had to put that in there. And the, the one for the senior center is $11,000 coming out of her budget. I don't know if you know the situation, but there is a transmission out of one van and a um, engine in the other. So they, my understanding, that's already been ordered. So is it uh, coming out of the? It is coming out of the senior center's oper vehicle operation expense and going into our office excuse me, going out of operational expense into the vehicle expense. So it's coming from hard. We're not actually adding any money, but if we have kind of, let's, let's have a motion in a second before we, when you guys get ready. And then what we'll, are these uh, highlighted for? Those are the late list. Usually they're on two separate lists, but Patty, since Ann was gone, Patty could only print this list and set a separate one with just the late list. So this just, is your bills and claims, payments there. and transfers. And everything that's highlighted is late list. What's this magazine we're out lay up for? Uh, is it Oceda? It's Oceda. It's now part of their operating budget, I believe. All the money went into it because they are now taking care of it. It's in there. It's within their budget. Yeah, it's, you see those out in the community. Um, the mainly locals. The mainly locals. Yeah, they came and spoke about it. Yeah, it's coming out of their budget. Yeah. 
out of whose budget? OCS. Yeah. OCS oh, budget. They pay for that. It's a pretty nice little magazine you see on that community. Make a motion to so have We have a motion to pass bills, claims, and transfers from Callaway. Have a second? Second. Second by Michael McKinney. Roll call, please. Callaway? Yes. Morphew? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Bennett? Yes. Bullock? Yes. So one of those things we talked about, I'm going to get a little off, but we talked about the uh, the the van with the transfer, and we know we had it, the parts are in order, so we had to pass that, but um, Michael McKinney and I were talking about maybe looking at advertising for a new van to just see what it costs before they actually sunk the $11,000 into the van. Charlie's going to look at to see if we can even take those, you know, back, because they're two old vans. So, what I would like to do is if we could get a motion to maybe just see advertise for a new van with a wheelchair lift, and Charlie is going to, uh, he's going to look at the specs just to have an option instead of having two old vans with one the engines out and one the transmission out, maybe get rid of those. And how many miles are on them? I don't know the mileage on them, but uh, I think the oil was out of the transmission. That they're 2014 out. models. They're 2014 models? I believe so. Charlie? They are. Okay. 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 I got and we might not act on this, but we just thought instead of spending that kind of money on the two vehicles, and we could take the parts back, if it was a, if it come back reasonable, it might be better to have a new vehicle with a lift than to, and it's something we're not going to act on until we get the bins and look at it, but could we go what ahead and get a motion to advertise? Of, what would the money come out of for the van? Uh, well, uh, the width. The one that the wheelchair lift has 70,292 miles. The one the transmission now has 137,000 miles. And 70 is not a lot, but it's, you know, really we were talking about maybe getting rid of two of them to bring up the one new one. And uh, we would, it would have to, we would have to kind of several plus those and sell them to see what even, and I don't know exactly what the money took. We would just kind of like to see for the best. Do we not need to? Huh? Do we not need to? Well, we talked about that, Michael. What do you, I mean, it's, it's my understanding that the one's been out of service for quite some time. Yeah, I, I just I would like for us to entertain uh, looking at projects like that as a, as a court rather than going ahead and fixing things without acknowledging. But if we need to, we don't need to get rid of both of them. Well, and, and here's the thing: yet. all I'm trying to do is maybe let's advertise for a bid, not to. And we still have the money; we transferred the money over. So if it, the bids come back and it's not feasible. We can fix the we can fix the automobiles because they've already transferred. The, uh, we just wanted to see what the cost. We do get it. We can get our money back for the eleven thousand. We don't know that. Charlie's oh, looking into that. No, I want to pump on now because if he doesn't, then. Motor's supposed to be here last week. Mm -hmm. He's supposed to be here this week, and uh, the transmission is seven weeks out. So we're just want to have an option. It, we might not even do this, but it might be the fact that we all do replace the two. The two but. And Larry, to answer your question. I, I don't. I don't believe so, because the actual amount that's going to be spent on the vehicles exceeds the eleven. The eleven, I think, was to offset what they didn't already have in their yeah. in their account. So what it's close. I, I said the uh, the amount's going to exceed the eleven thousand. They're just taking it out. It's going to be thirteen something. Yeah, closer to fourteen thousand. But she's got that already in her budget. She just needed to move eleven over. So. I, you know, I don't know. It may be thirteen thousand is the best way to do it, but I would like to get her bid just to see if it's feasible to instead of putting all the money in two old vehicles, maybe to get a newer vehicle to see if it's feasible. Okay. That we do, if we need to, we need to just get rid of one of them and buy a new one. It, it, it may be. And, and that may be. And we don't have to buy. We're just we're just advertising for a bid to see if it's feasible, basically. Thank you. Can the Calvin make a motion? And Charlie would look at the specs. He said he could do that for us. Second. Second. Can uh -oh. I mean, uh, both. And like I said, we might not act on this, but we were just thinking, you know, instead of two fixing two old vehicles that are, it might be feasible to get rid of those and look at a newer vehicle. And it, and it might just be astronomical price, and we just say, no, we can't do that. Fix the old vehicle. But at least we'll know. Okay. So uh, that wasn't on the wasn't on there, but um, there's the clerk's receipts of sheriff's 22. Uh, 2022 uh, oil and gas bills, and all we had to do, I guess, is acknowledgement for that. that have anybody acknowledge that we received it for the receipts? 
Did you guys get a copy? I don't see a copy. That should be the second thing in there after the minutes. Uh, right. Uh, I thought that was the vehicle. The vehicle surplus. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, do we need a vote on the motion? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, let's, let's, let's backtrack a little bit because that wasn't on that. Let's, let's have a roll call on the, uh, the bidding process for the van. Callaway? Yes. Mark, you? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Bennett? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Okay, now back to the uh, acknowledgement for uh, receipt of sheriff's 22 oil and gas field receipts. And they are right in behind the, the, the minutes. I'll make a motion that we acknowledge. Acknowledge it made by Bo. Second. And Michael, second. I heard first. Okay. Roll call. I'm, and I'm sorry, roll call and everything. I just want to make sure this is my motion that we get. Callaway? Yes. Mark you? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Bennett? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Okay. So at 4 o'clock we had a uh, bid opening for the um, sirens. I don't know if you remember, it's, it's been two meetings ago or so. We, there was a technicality with some of the writing of the grant, I guess, or the wording, and we had to rebid these. So uh, we received two bids. And these are two sirens that are go out. One's going to go out at um, the fairgrounds, and the other's going to go at the uh, bluegrass crossings. And I have the two bids right here. And I actually have a little cheat sheet here we've drawn up that tells you the bids, uh, passing them, who they were, the how much, and I will also read that off too. Uh, pass one to my friend. Okay, so uh, the first bidder was uh, Federal Signal uh, Corporation. Their bid uh, was $60,470.80. A second bid was um, Ohio Valley Two-Way Radio. It was $50,803.23. After talking with the people in the meeting with Charlie and uh, the, the grad representative, um, one concern they had with a couple concerns they had with the bidder two. Bidder one, all 17 fire stock sirens that we have are from Federal Signal uh, Corporation. So they were kind of looking at that. And the, the exceptions they had with the other one was uh, the interoperability with the county. You know, the ones we already have, would these operate? And the bid did not address the interoperability with the counties. Uh, the coverage area of the proposed sirens in the bid it was 1.25 mile range. Um, this was we feel like we, it was 0 0.75, so it wasn't a little over half the the uh, coverage area with the second bid. Um, another thing we looked at was the certificate of insurance was not provided, so it work you had to provide a certificate of insurance. You know even so uh, that wasn't provided. I'm sure they might have it. We looked into it. And nothing was itemized or broke down as required. And uh, it was not required in the bid, but it wasn't itemized. So uh, the recommendation from, I think, uh, Charlie was that we accept bid number one, uh, Federal Signal Corporation, due to the fact that that's what we have in the county already, all 17, and that the coverage area is almost half the, almost half the coverage area. and. Uh, the money's there. I think the only thing that maybe we decided we were going to be out because of there's a grant. The money, three thirty one hundred dollars is what the county would be out of this. Yes, about so thirty one hundred dollars. Uh, Ninety percent of the cost is covered by the federal okay. government. The state chips in four point eight percent, so the county would pay five point two percent. Okay. Is there anything you guys want to say anything about this that I left out or missed or? I just want to say, uh, the Charlie, if they had trouble with some of these. Yes, and the reason I have not had them in here to fix it, I knew this was coming up, and why they're in here, whoever got the bid, I was gonna have a look at all these other ones because it costs so much money to bring somebody in here. It costs almost $2,000 just to bring somebody in here to look at it. 
If I get them already in here, I can go have them go around and save that cost. How long have they been out? I mean, we've had some out for a while now. I mean, I'm talking a few months. We really, that's uh, health and safety. We need to probably get them fixed. Uh, and I, I agree. I did ask Charlie, those that are that are down, is there a way to, you know, if they're sitting there, is there a way to, could you look and get a price and see, can we fix and repair those too? And put them somewhere else. And I was just, I was just trying to save the county money because I mean, if I bring them in here tomorrow, it's going to cost us. They're coming in here. They're going to be coming in here two months, and I can do it all at one time. Yeah, but if you've got kind of an emergency and they're not working, that's going to look bad on the county. That's true. I just didn't know where we're going to get the money yet, Larry. I mean, I'm all for. I can get them here tomorrow. If somebody would tell we me. We to come up with money on safety issue, Charlie. Okay, I'll call them tomorrow and get them coming in here. I'll be more glad to. You mean as far as repairing the ones that are down right now? We got, we got one I know of is down right now mm -hmm. that has not went off in a few months. Okay. And I went around, talked to everybody in the community. It's in the McHenry area. Everybody was fine, waiting. But I mean, if y'all want me to, I can call Federal Signal, get them coming. You didn't, probably didn't get to talk to everybody though, did you? I can't, I can't guarantee everybody's gonna answer the door, but I did my very best the time I had. Also, on this turnaround, we're talking 60, 60, to, not, 60 to 80 days, he said? Six to eight weeks. Six to eight weeks, I'm sorry, six to eight weeks. You don't think these people from Owensboro would fix them under $2,000? I don't think they can. They don't, they don't work on federal signals when I called them last time. $10,000, you can fix quite a few. Now this is for new sirens. These are brand new. These are brand new. I know, but the reason you're getting them is because you said these others just flew this. The reason we said we was doing federal signals, that's what we already got. And and the oil world did not meet the bid specs of what we put out by the federal government. Well, and one thing is that the area coverage <coughs> is almost twice as much. Not quite, we're talking uh, 0.75 as opposed to 1.25 miles. You know, so you're with with the the ten thousand dollars more, you're getting over a half mile more. Uh, and that's area. what the grant stated that yeah. it'd be one point two five distance, not point seven. So you're, you're you're paying a little bit more, but you're getting a lot more area ever area coverage. Where's this one going? One of them's going to the industrial park, or the Blueberry Crossing out there, and one's going to the county park. Okay, I think that's the. I know what you're saying. I looked at ten thousand too, but. When you're talking about the area coverage and you're talking that much more, and never, if my understanding right, if they didn't cover, a, if there was a certain amount of area that didn't cover so many houses, we might not apply, the federal grant might not yes, pay us back. We, so this is a reimbursable grant, so the county will expend yeah. the, the full project cost and then you'll get reimbursed for 94.8% of the money once the project has been completed. But we're going to have to document that the work that we did with this federal money fulfills the requirements of the project. And one of those requirements was a coverage radius of 1.25 miles, which the federal signal comes close to meeting that, close enough where I'm, I'm confident we'll get reimbursed, whereas the Ohio Valley two-way radio sirens only cover half that distance, and there might be some issues with FEMA getting reimbursed because you didn't get what you ever, or you didn't get what you promised you were gonna do with these federal dollars. And that was a concern, that we would have to be out a lot more money and then, the other thing that the Ohio Valley two-way radio bid wasn't as responsive to the bid specs because we specified in the specs that those two sirens had to be, the two new sirens had to be interoperable with Charlie's existing control system that activates the other sirens. And that was not addressed in the bid that they submitted. They didn't talk about how the sirens would work how they'd be turned on, any of that stuff was not provided with the bid. And, and that was a concern that we thought, well, if, if we if we get them, and then to make them work with Charlie, is there gonna be additional expense of like a few thousand dollars to, no. and we know this company's already, this is what we have. Any and more questions? The, the difference for the county, uh, when you take the cost share into consideration, the difference um, in the end, once you get reimbursed by the federal government and by the state, um, bid one would cost the county $502.72 more than if they took the lower one. 
So it's not really ten thousand dollars you're looking at; it's five hundred dollars is what you're looking at. And the area and the coverage area. That's kind of the yeah, and the coverage area. That's so five hundred dollars more for twice the coverage area seems like a pretty good deal for the county. I think it was one of those things, like you said, Larry. You know, safety comes first, and even if it comes to that, you want to you want to cover. Is this open for everybody? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. We want to get that more, as much cover average as we can. And we're talking almost, not quite half, but a little over half. So, we have a motion to accept um, bid um, bid number one, which is Federal Signal Corporation, for uh, sixty thousand four hundred and seventy dollars, and authorize Ann Melton County Treasurer to write the check. Make a motion to accept the bid and operate on the chat. Okay, we have a motion by Kenneth Callaway. Uh, and uh, I'll get that there. We roll call that and then uh, yeah. ask, it, ask Charlie. Mm -hmm. Callaway? Yes. Morphew? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Bennett? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Okay, if you have an old, uh, we're not going to, we're not going to Paul has a question. Uh, okay. Could I go ahead and have you order those parts for the Mac Henry? Yes. Fire? Okay. I'll take care of that tomorrow. Do you know what the cost on that would be? I do not. Okay. Yeah, uh, the estimate. You know, and my thing is when I was talking to him in a meeting, see what the cost of guesstimate would be, and we might fix those, and you could put yeah. them in certain, another area. Yeah. yeah. The batteries, no. I think, I mean, they're about $200 and so the store roll is about $800. Uh, but I'll find out for sure yeah. tomorrow we okay. if, it, if it's feasible, it's better than the set that happens that Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a motion for Charlie to order those batteries or whatever he's going to need to fix that. I'll take care of that tomorrow. Uh, where do you want this to come from? Uh, I mean, I can pay for it or it can come out of however we need to pay Do we know how much the battery you think is for? Roughly $200 a piece. And there's four of them in there. There's $800. Not to exceed the thousand. Yeah. And I don't. I don't have a problem with helping you with that. I, mean, I don't know if everybody wants to do that. Well, I'm good with that too. I can take. Care, I can take care of that. I don't know if I need to. Well, it might be something that you think about. I don't know how many you say we're down three. Are they? And I don't know the cost. For, I know y'all going to ask me that. Okay. Bose is easy. I know what's wrong. With okay. His. I do not know what's wrong. And it might be something we we would want to do maybe if one we get some bit like the in our community somewhere, you know. Okay. You know, so I got a motion by Bo to, uh, to write the check to I'll, to, uh, I'll second that. Okay. And Ann's authorized to write the check. You got the motion? Yes. Roll call. Callaway? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Kenny? Yes. Bennett? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh looks like I've got an old one, I guess. Is Jody not coming? No. Okay, so tourism. She was here last time. Did she give you the numbers? Nope. Okay, so we'll invite her next meeting, maybe. Yep. Uh, looks like we got number six on this thing. I found the new one. It's the Sheriff's Department Surplus Vehicles. They are not here, but, well, yeah, yeah, Adam is here. Sorry. <laughs> Olivia's not here. Sheriff, what vehicles are you? <laughs> surplus. Seeing. For all the people. I have the VIN numbers attached. It's the very last page in your packet. Okay. Uh, okay, so it looks like you're surplusing a uh, 2007 Ford Crown Victoria with the VIN number here and two. What's two one fifteen? Two. That's the second vehicle. That's the second okay, vehicle. Sorry. Okay, the second. Okay, the second vehicle is a 2015. I thought it maybe two Dodge Challengers. So uh, it's the 2015 Dodge Challenger. That is correct. These vehicles, uh, what we're planning on doing with is uh, the reason we're asking the county to surplus these vehicles, Lincoln County's reached out to us during our sheriff's I can't understand. Sorry. sorry about that. That's all right. It's all right. I'm not very loud, anyways. <laughs> now, you, uh, when you surplus, you take the uh, equipment out of them? Yes, in this particular instance, we're going to leave, we're going to take our radio out of it, we're going to leave lights and sirens in it, and what we're planning on doing with these cars. Lincoln County started a program with their SROs for their schools, but they don't have enough money to get that started for them. Uh, they reached out throughout all the counties and was asking if anybody had any cars. We have that to that, or we have the Crown Victoria and the Dodge Challenger. 
they understand that these cars are getting are not top of the they're, they're going to need some work, some TLC. Uh, the charger, I think the transmission is going out of them. You can't turn left in it. They're fully aware of it. <laughs> so it's the one that's parked over by the courthouse. It's not worth putting the money into it. It would just be wasting money if we fixed it. And the Crown Victoria that we're going to send, I think uh, it needs, a, I think, something with the electrical system. But they said for what they're going to be using the car for, that'd be perfect. So we were want to surplus that so we can. Ohio County could give Lincoln County those two cars to help them get their school or police department back up and going. If y'all are okay with that. Need a motion. Yeah, so let's make a motion to uh, surplus the two vehicles. So moved. All right. Motion by Larry. Second. Second. Okay. Roll call. Callaway? Yes. Morphew? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Bennett? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Okay, are there any committee reports? Michael? Uh, no committee reports. Oh. Uh, we started the right away committee, but we haven't made it yet. We've been gathering information for that. So, uh, be more to come on a later date. Okay, there are any committee Larry? reports? What is this? Comments? Uh, committee reports right now. Uh, no, comments. I'll get to get right next. <coughs> um, okay, so manage your comments. I've got a list here. I talked to, but uh, let's first go to Michael, first district. Uh, what I I'd like for us to get together, um, maybe a plan just amongst ourselves on how we could better service those vehicles at the senior center. If everybody would kind of put their ideas down, so we could talk about it at a later date. Is that something we can do, like a four o'clock meeting before the next before the next meeting? Maybe if that. There's nothing scheduled at four o'clock. Is there before? That's okay with everybody. Okay. Vehicle maintenance concerns, I guess. Yes. Okay. Maybe all departments. Maybe just take a brief look at all that and see how it's been taken care of. And we can also get the safety committee together to do there to come in charge of the maintenance on certain things as well. Okay. So what committee is the? Uh, it was a vehicle maintenance. I don't have the wording, but it okay. was appointed. I can get it out. Okay. Well, you might invite them to that, and then, of yeah, course, all, and then, and then, then we advertise that it's all, all managers yeah, it's all can together. be there. So, <clears throat> four o'clock next meeting, then we will, uh, real quick about the next meeting, I have that. I know that's fall, during fall break. I'm not going anywhere. Usually, I, Joe was here, and he had kids, and I had kids, and we would kind of just do bills of flames, but I don't plan on going anywhere. I think the only one is anybody else? Yeah. You'll be gone. Okay, Miranda, are you gonna be? No, I'm here? gonna be in town, so okay. I mean, I'll be here if I need to. Be. Okay. I think right now, then we we'll, we should be we'll fine then. We'll set a quorum. So okay. I just didn't know if that was gonna be a concern. It has in the past, but we will check on that. Okay. Where's that? Bo. Sorry, uh, I guess, but, you haven't asked Bo yet. Uh, but no, no comments. I kind of okay. rambled mine into a committee there. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I've inquired a couple of times about some logging being done out on New Bamus Road, and, and I think there, there's quite a bit of debris, and, and they've cut down the, the hill on the side of the road, the ditch, uh, I think it's messed up, and I'm just trying to determine what, is that something the road crew takes care of, or is this a responsibility of the, the logging? Well, you, you need to find that because they're supposed to, before they log an area, they're supposed to check in with the road for them. Yeah and make sure go over things before they get done and then leave. So I would check with, uh, did you check with? Uh, I, I've inquired a couple times with, with, with the judge, but. Uh, I, you might check with uh, Nick. Yeah, yeah, I'll ask Chandra tomorrow. Okay. They're supposed to come fill out a form, the logging company pays $10 for their permit, any damage done afterwards when they survey, they're going to be responsible. Yeah, yeah. you get a permit, don't they? Yeah. yeah. So Nick would have, if they've done that, Nick should know about that and have that on file. So, Is that New Bayless? New Bayless, yeah. Yeah, I got logging on New Bayless Road. Okay. Are you aware of any bonding issues out there, Charlie? What road is it? New, New Bayless. No. Well, I guess let's check with Nick first and see if he, because they're supposed to, if the new, they're, now, does that happen all the time? No, we know that. And if it doesn't, they could be responsible for it. Okay. Uh, Larry, do you have any? I just uh, want people to know in my district that the roads, the road forms the government. After tomorrow, they'd be ready for the blacktop. 
Oh, okay. So yeah. and, uh, they, I noticed they've been out prepping and getting the roads done. So that's all I got. Yeah, they had my road. All right. Um, I do have a couple things. Uh, first of all, you've got the letter here. Did you guys check this letter? I know some of you are new, and, and one manager brought up a question. But it's our Christmas dinner. We do it every year, and it asks for a hundred dollar donation. Now, that, now that I've said that, that's you just be granted if you choose to give. But the reason we give $100, it's not out of our discretionary money, it's out of our personal money because we can't do that by gifts like that. For So each, it is not just magistrates. They ask all county employees to give $100. And then at the Christmas party, we buy gifts with that and give out to the, uh, the employees. So uh, that's what that letter's about. And that's why the $100 is a personal gift because you can't use your discretionary money for that. So we've been doing that for several years now. Michael, were we doing that when we were together? Was, okay, so it's been over eight years yeah, we've been doing this. It, yeah, it was. Uh, mm -hmm. So at least 10 years or so. Um, also, um, I want to remind somebody, I want to remind you guys, you might have got a letter, but the open house for the, um, the hospital for the new surgical wing is opening. Uh, Thursday? Friday. Is it Friday? Friday at 5. Friday at 5 to 7. Okay, and they really, I talked to CC today, they would like to have a head count because uh, they want to take a picture of the mattress there, Ribbon Cutting, just a little bit after 5 o'clock. And here's some information too, I did, if I get it here, just kind of some highlights and procedures of how they've got to this point. Well, I can, there, hang on. How they got to this point uh, talks a little bit about their process to getting to the search going. But at this at, at this time, does anybody know? Because I told CC I would probably uh, text her afterwards to kind of get an idea. Does anybody plan on going to five o'clock? So you'd like to have everybody there uh, Friday at the new surgical wing. I'm working on it. Okay. I told her I said with my family issues. I'm going to try to be there, but I don't know. I can't promise. They will be there. They will be there. Yeah. Okay. But if you can, guys, that is a really nice search for the wing. And one of the things, if you look down here, kind of, this is the process, the timeline. You know, they start buying the real estate up in 2013 and 17. But if you look at it, they've added 25 new positions. Uh, this is the highlight here. New positions of clinical and support staff directly related to the new surgical unit. This account adds for 400000 <laughs> Uh, in wages, salaries, and benefits. OCHS current annual wage salaries and benefits total over $34 million during the time frame. OCHS total employee rows, count rows to 650 employees to 6, 725. So there's 725 employees paying occupational tax at the new. <coughs> and I guess that's saying that they've got 25 new positions and probably end up being more at the new surgical staff positions. Um, and in 2022, OCHH paid over $355,000 in taxes to Ohio County government. So uh, not only for their health needs are they valuable to Ohio County, but tax purposes are valuable for Ohio County too. They, and uh, you know, we were concerned about die sale, uh, and it is a big concern, especially for people who lost their jobs, but this is going to be a big, big help for Ohio County too when, when they uh, start the new surgical wing. But she would love for you guys to be there at 5 o'clock. Um, if you guys can on Friday, I'm going to try to be there uh, and uh, for the open house. Okay, so where else is my notes here? Got a few more things here. Um, another thing, too, is let me look through here. My wife just texted me. Sorry about that. Uh, let me get the, let me get everything out of that they want me to. One thing is Jason Chin was supposed to be here, but something's happened with his dad. He, he's had a setback and can't make it. But do you guys remember when we applied for grad for that um, power line? Um, Larry was here. The industrial park. Yeah, the the industrial park. park. And park. we put $300,000 back and grad gave us a $300,000 grant. Well, we have our $300,000 part. The grad guy, he's left here, but we have to come up and pay. It's a matching grant. What? No, it's a 
upfront grant. So we have to pay the $300,000 down of the grad part before we get our money back. It's a turnaround of about 90 days, I said. But we will get it back. But we will get our money back. So what, I talked to Ann, I came here and talked to Ann and I talked to David. They wanted, so we won't have to have a special meeting, if you guys don't mind to go ahead and do this and get the process rolling. This is a motion I have. It says a motion uh, for Ohio County Physical Court to apply for a $300,000 loan for the electrical power expansion at Bluegrass Crossing Industrial Park, if deemed necessary by the county judge and county treasurer. You know, if they find another resource, uh, but this allows us to go ahead and borrow the money, pay it up front, and then get reimbursed. And it's a six month, uh, six month note. Also, allow Ann Melton, the treasurer, to write the check to Warren Rural Electric. I think that's who is the uh, service provider out there. So, if I can get a uh, um, motion on that in a second. And what this is, is just we had to, the type of grant, and I talked to the grad guy who was in there, we have to pay it up front before we can get reimbursed. The money's there, but well, we, we have, will get reimbursed. We will get reimbursed. You said 90 days. Well, approximately 90 days, but I said let's go ahead and do a six month loan. And that way, if it does over 90 days, we're fine. We still have it. You got that in writing saying we will get it, do you? Um, we, we were approved for the loan by grad. Now, grad says we will get the loan, but part of the loan process, Charlie, you were in there, is tell me about the loan. Part of this loan is it's kind of like this one. You have to pay the money up front. The loan that we, I mean, the, what we got is a hazardous education grant. Charlie, I can't hear you back there. Can you? Let me get up there. And I did run this by Ann and sorry about that. Oh, you're and David both. both. So the loan that we have for our weather sirens is a hazard mitigation. We have to pay everything up front and we get it back and it's a 90 day turnaround. I'm thinking what Jason's talking about is the same type of grant. It's a 90 day, you pay everything up, then you get it's a 90 day turnaround. But we were approved days. as a grant, yeah. Yeah, so, 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 so I can't was approved the grant for that. But we will get our money back. That's according to Jason Chen and them, yes. According to grad, Mr. Yes. The grant no. representative was not the grant writer over there, but he was going to look into it for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a different person. He was just going to look into it. But we have been approved. We were actually approved for the grant back when uh, Jody was working over there. Jody asked, do you think we'll make sure before we... Spend well, and that's why I said in the grant, if deemed necessary by the county judge or, but why he said if we could go ahead and pass this motion tonight, and she said that, we would have to have a special call meeting next week. Now, if it's not deemed necessary, then they don't have to go. That's why I said deemed necessary by the county judge and the treasurer. But this allows them, because we voted on, for her to apply. She's going to look at, she said she would look at grad for the loan, and she would look at, we banked through, uh, First United Bank in uh, Beaverdam or Hopkinsville. So, um, after talking to Ann, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm fine with it. This is, she just said, you know, we need to do this so we don't have to have a special call meeting later on. And it's, it, I think it's just a formality. So, can we make a motion contingent about them providing this between now and then, this written proof of? But we can add that in there, and that's why I kind of I wanted to say I deem necessary to judge. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Contingent on them providing written proof of, of the guarantee okay. of, of the reimbursement. So what we'll do is on the end of that is uh, I put expansion to Bluegrass Crossing Industrial Park if deemed necessary, and I added this in there if deemed necessary by the county judge and uh, with written proof from Grad that we will see the grant. Okay. And I'll add that, to the, I'll uh, amend my motion to that. Okay. Let me put it with written. How much interest we like to pay for six months? Well, hopefully we'll pay for it for six or months. Probably three, yeah. Yeah. It probably should be three, hopefully. <coughs> We walk there. Can I have one more thing to the motion? Yeah. Can we authorize the judge to sign any necessary documentation? 
Typically doesn't have to bring back a contract or an approval or usually when they bring okay. back an application. Okay, so I've, I've got in there to allow Ann Melton, the treasurer, to write the check. Also to allow the judge, so what are you saying? All corresponding documentation. To sign documentation. Okay. Does anybody want to read, read it again? I'll read it. The motion for Ohio County to support to apply for a $300,000 loan for the in, in electrical power expansion at Bluegrass Crossing Industrial Park. It, it deemed necessary by the county judge and treasurer with written proof from Brad provided. Which we have that. I mean, it just also allow Ann Melton, treasurer, to write the check to Warren Rural Electric. And also to allow the judge to sign any documentations. But we will get the written before we do it. It is what that was yeah. it says now, yeah. And here's the thing, this is something we're gonna have to do anyway. If we don't, it's just gonna allow Ann says we have to have done it on vacation. If we did it now, and like I said, because I don't want to do this without their approval anyway, is we don't have to come back next week and have a special call meeting. I can make that motion. Okay. Motion made by Kenneth Callaway. I guess the mileage is forming, and then he can second it? Yeah, I'll second it. Okay. Then we'll do a roll call on this. Yeah, motion? I'll make the motion since I made the motion. And then we'll have uh, Kenneth second, and then we'll roll call. Callaway. Yes. Morphew. Yes. McKinney. Yes. Bennett. Yes. Bullock. Yes. Yes. Okay, so let me see what I got again. Um, we did the bid for the open house, the Christmas dinner. Okay, the motion. Okay, so another thing here is too, and this is this is discretionary money thing. Uh, I was talking to um, Ann Melton about they would like to do, uh, and they're going to talk to the cities and see if they want to be involved in it too and contribute to it. Um, I thought I had some paper on it. But they're wanting to do a first responders dinner. They're wanting to do a first responders dinner and they're wanting to know, was it how much was it up to? $2,500? The uh, county would provide up to $2,500. Do you have that? Okay. So you did get a letter on there? Yeah. Okay. So what they're wanting to know is if you guys are interested in doing a first responders meal for uh, fire department volunteers, sheriff deputies, police departments, 911 dispatch, ambulance personnel and all jail deputies. Uh, the mayors from each town and city and other officials and matches the physical court will be invited. Um, but what they're wanting, I think, is a $500 contribution from our, each of us from our discretionary monies, if you guys would want to vote on that. I think that's kind of what she was asking for, to help pay for the dinner. So, my question is, is Everybody okay with that? To help provide, I don't think we've ever done anything like this. This is something new. I mean, I, we feel like we probably should have done it a long time ago, but, um, and I think that they'll be asking, like I said, they're gonna be asking the mayors from all the other cities too that they wanna to contribute to it too. But I think what they're wanting from us is $500 from each discretionary money to help pay our $2,500 part. So, here's my thing. We don't really have to vote on this, I don't think. If you guys are okay at the dinner, we can vote on the dinner. And if each of you want to do um, the $500, then you can contact Ann and say, I'll contribute or I'll contribute this amount so you can just do that on your own. <coughs> that way we won't have to do this right, right here. But if you're, uh, do we think we have to have a motion for the party? Do you think go ahead or is that something? Okay, I don't think there's that needs to be a motion for that. But if you uh, want to take part of that and you think it's a great idea, if you want to contact Ann, she's out of town. so. You'll contact Ann sometime next week and say, hey, I'm willing to give 500 or this much out of my discretion money to have this dinner for them. Now, I don't know exactly that. Oh, the dinner will be February 8, 2024, and it will be catered. So I think, you know, this is something good. We've not ever done that, and that's, that's a good idea. 
So, like I said, if you just if you're okay with that, you contact Ann and uh, let her know how much you're willing. How much? I think they were wanting to see if we would get 500 each. So that you know you can give. That's why we won't do it here. You can just call Ann if you want to give 500. If you want to give 600. If you want to give 300. But that way you can do it. But basically out of discretionary money, and in between here and there. If we can figure out a way, David knows not here, we can figure out a way to find $2,500. That might be a process too, you know what I mean? So, we can add to next year's budget. And, and I think, yeah, I think that's what we could do. We could look at adding it to next year's budget. I think this is something we need to do. But right now, we're just going ahead and saying it's okay to have the dinner. Uh, we might use our discretionary money, and we might uh, not. So, uh, I don't think we would have to use our discretionary well, we, money. Let's go ahead and say we're having the dinner to prove that. And then we can look at the look for the money some other way if we have to. But I think we're all in agreement that we want to have the first responders dinner, so we're okay with that. And I'll let Ann know that. Okay. So the the last thing I have here is um, let me see if I can find. I got so much stuff in here. We're not doing the drug and alcohol policy later. <laughs> I got one more thing and I'm done. I talked to Ann about before I left. What, what did not do the drug and alcohol? What, what uh, did we're not addressing the drug and alcohol policy tonight because our county attorney's not here. If there were any questions, he had to be gone. <coughs> Excuse me. So he would rather us to address that at the next meeting. Okay. So if there's any questions, he can be here for that. Okay. So yeah. Resolutions, I think. Okay, yeah, here's the resolution for this. I'm sorry. So the last thing is, we've had some, um, you guys weren't here, it was just Larry and I at the time, but at the time we got, we were blessed with a lot of money from the federal government, from uh, all the COVID, you know, two, two pots of money, and we've used a lot of it, but there's one big pot of money we've not used yet, and it doesn't look like we're going to use that part of it. So uh, Ann had brought this to me. The Feeding America program, okay, they work with the um, food, food pantry in Ohio County, and what they're asking, they didn't come to ask us, they were asking, they're having a fund driver in the community, but they are asking that we, uh, the community provide uh, monetary donations, our sponsor kids for backpack programs. And what that is, is I work in the school system, every Friday we give a child that has filled out a form that, has, doesn't have a lot of food so they can have food over the weekend because the schools are provided and it's a bag of food that each I know right now be around this year I have 26 but usually in uh, in Ohio County alone probably total we have close to 300 kids each weekend they get a food bag and they go home and it's I guess it gives them some food over the weekend to kind of get them through until they can come back to school and have breakfast and uh, lunch there so Ann's suggestion was some of this money because certain amount of this Rescue Act money, you can't just use it for just anything. It has to be a health of need or it can't be used for roads and stuff like that. There are certain things it can be used for. But she was wondering if to sponsor every kid all year long in Ohio County would be $17,072. The money's there. <clears throat> it was so $17,072. <clears throat> the money was there from something we set back was we had a homeless shelter and a few other things we set back and we were looking into. It doesn't look like that's going to work. So she wondered since we need to spend some of this money and it goes along with what the guidelines that um, uh, the Rescue Act was, let's see, I don't know which fund this is, American uh, Rescue uh, Plan, ARPA, yeah, the ARPA that we just take some of that money in since we're not going to use that and use the $17,072 and sponsor for a year every kid in Ohio County for the food bags. The money's there, it doesn't come out of the county, it's been sitting there in a pot waiting and this type of thing would, would work for that type of money. So if the, I'll make a motion that the uh, what's county the adopt. What's the amount of the pot? What? What have we got in the pot that we're trying to disperse? Do you know the total? I do know the total. Okay. Over four hundred thousand dollars. Okay. There's plenty of money in there. It's not. 
that was something set back for they were looking into doing a uh, home, homeless shelter that's not really necessarily going through right now so that is something so this is just one just a small small one any part of it so who's asking for it um well they didn't actually ask for us this is just something they're doing a fundraiser and we saw it uh, actually Ann brought it to me in the food pantry it's the food pantry and it goes through feeding america and uh, their funds are running low on sponsoring kids so we just thought we could sponsor a year then that's why we had this money and then they the money they raised they could use it for the next year or the following year after that and it would build the fund up for them so you would have to free cost to sponsor one a year um when i i don't know when i was there it was about 125 dollars a kid i'm just guessing per year and you're talking 200 uh, 200 kids 200 to 300 kids depending on each year uh, and it's that's it's probably raised since then that's thirty-seven thousand dollars. So I guess it's. I don't know why she's seventeen thousand seventy-two dollars. She said that would sponsor uh, all the kids for one year. My guess is they've already got funds raised. Okay. So yeah, this would that would finish the year. Okay. Seventeen thousand. Seventy-two dollars of the uh, the one pot of money we're not going to use right now. So I'll make that in form of motion, and I got a copy of this. If anybody wants to see, it's to adopt resolution. Uh, 2024, I don't know what dash it would be here. I uh, wasn't prepared for that part, but I'll and get the number for here's you. all the information about the Community Works Offer Grant, and it tells you we've got to, you know, okay, here she is. She's got a, the program averaged out three dollars per bag, however, this year's cost was going to soar to 494 a kid. Um, so they we are asking that you support the program with funding that will help offset the cost differential. That's what it is, it's the cost, because it's almost $2 more a kid, it's the cost differential. So, um, last year, over 40 week program, they had 220 kids times 40 weeks at $1.94 extra, it's $17,072. That's what it is. You're doing the 40 weeks, 222 kids, or 220 kids, uh, you're doing that $1.94 extra, and that's the $17,072. And it falls within the perimeters of the uh, Yeah, sure can. Um, what, why, why was there a setback on the homeless shelters? And I'm not saying this is not ever going to happen. I'm not, I don't know, I'm not. Yeah. That's a different committee. Okay. But right now, some of this money needs to be spent. Yeah. And it, nothing's been done right now. Mm -hmm. And this falls in because you're helping, and that's well, what this money is for to help people. Yeah. Um, There's no time limit on spending that money, is it? There is some time limits on it. Yes, there is. Why is it? I don't know the exact time limit, but there is a time limit. You have to have it spent. Or, if yeah. it's not submitted and turned in at a certain date, then it's really good. That's why they want to go ahead and just do some of it. Now, not to say that they're not going to do a hard right. shelter, but it's moving at a turtle speed right now. Now, there are some parts of the ARPA money, there's two different classes. There are some you could spend on roads and stuff like that. And this part, there's two different parts. This part didn't, it fell under, it had to be like parks and rec, or it had to be helping, providing people, or something like that. I guess during times of need of COVID. So, this money is not the one you can use for roads and road equipment or anything like that. What about um, rehabilitation centers? Is this is that for another committee time or? I mean, there's uh, we have a lot of money to certain different like is that our father's house? Yeah, yeah. father's house, but that's a men's facility. Yeah, right now there's no women's facility. Right. Yes. yes. Not to say that it, no, it, it, this money could be a lot for something like that. Yes. That, I think, yeah. Yes, okay. it could be. That's the type of money it's for. Awesome. But uh, we have done the our father's house. I know that. Yes, and, it, and it's a wonderful program. It's yeah. doing well. Yeah. I made the motion. Oh, so I'll say. I wasn't sure. Yeah, yeah, and it's a small amount of that money that we still got. So there might be some other things that we have to bring down and bring back to the table because we're not using that money. Uh, do a roll call, please. Calvary? Yes. Mark you? Yes. 
McKinney? Yes. Bennett? Yes. Bullock? Yes. And, and, and David and that's just David and Naomi on the new about this. Yes. So, didn't surprise that one, throw that on you. Okay, if the, anybody in the public like to speak? <laughs> okay. uh, no, that's all. I was just curious about. Uh, okay. But yes, there, there. Did you say four hundred thousand was left over of the COVID? Without the. I, yeah, there's without a big, the, there's a bigger chunk of money to set back for the, uh, for the, uh, homeless shelter. Yeah, it's I, not yeah, being I was used. just curious about that. Yeah, it's. Um, yeah, I think that there's like, a committee, and if you want to call the treasurer, Ann, Ann Melton, she's on vacation this week, but when she gets back, that's something she can kind of give you more details on. Okay. Because she's on that committee. Okay. <clears throat> but it was kind of set back, thinking maybe we would do something like that. It's not. Yeah. It's moved slow and it's not gone that way. So there's going to be some money we're going to do something probably with. Yeah, I, I'm more concerned with like a woman's rehabilitation. Yeah. You know. And see, at one time they had the homeless shelter, which is for women and kids, but that's yeah. kind of, yeah. Okay. Well, if there is nothing else, I'll make a motion we adjourn. Okay, here, she wants me to do a gavel. No, she's <laughs>